Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss regarding the esophagus which forms the upper part of GIT and this esophagus is a narrow muscular tube forming foot passage between pharynx and stomach and length of the esophagus is 25 cm which is similar to stomach. So now let us see where uh, the esophagus is getting originated. This is hyoid bone and then comes our thyroid cartilage. And then comes our C-shaped cartilage that is cricoid. And our esophagus begins in the level of cricoid cartilage. This is our esophagus. And there comes our aortic arch. And it runs downward as thoracic part and abdominal part of aorta. And there comes uh, trachea with the left bronchus and right bronchus bifurcation. So while running downwards in front of the vertebral column, this esophagus passes through the superior and posterior mediastinum and the esophagus enters the diaphragm at the level of T10 vertebra and it ends by opening into the stomach at its cardiac end at the level of T11. So here you have to know that the esophagus begins at the level of cricoid cartilage and it runs downwards in front of the vertebral column in the superior and posterior mediastinum and it enters into the enters through the diaphragm at T10 vertebra level and it joins with the cardiac end of the stomach at T11 vertebra so these things are more important Before entering in detail with the anatomy of esophagus, we will know regarding the different types of mediastinum. So, this forms the anterior chest wall and this forms the posterior chest wall. So, now we are seeing the cross section of the chest wall. So, so this upper part, this is called as superior mediastinum and this small part forms the anterior mediastinum and then the middle part forms the middle mediastinum and this posterior part and this part forms the posterior mediastinum. So while uh, going through the course of uh, esophagus we have read that the esophagus runs in front of the vertebral column along the superior mediastinum and posterior mediastinum. So this is how the esophagus runs and enters into the diaphragm to reach the abdomen. So now let us see regarding the construction of esophagus. So the first construction is at the pharyngoesophageal junction. So if you are measuring it from the incisor teeth, it is almost 15 centimeter. And then comes the second construction that where when the esophagus is crossed by the arch of iota and the distance from incisor teeth to the arch of iota constriction is around 22.5 centimeter. And the third constriction is at the level of left bronchus and the distance between the incisor teeth and left bronchus is 27.5 cm. And then at last the fourth constriction lies where the esophagus pierces the diaphragm. So the distance between the incisor teeth and the area where it pierces the diaphragm it is 37.5 cm. So I am just repeating it again. So the first constriction is at the level of pharyngoesophageal junction here and the distance is 15 cm and then it uh, then the second constriction lies at the level of arch of iota it is 22.5 cm and the third constriction lies at the level of left bronchus and the distance is 27.5 cm and at last the fourth constriction lies at the level of where level where the esophagus pierces the diaphragm and it is around 37.5 cm. Now regarding the arterial supply of esophagus. So anatomically esophagus is divided into three parts. One is cervical, then thoracic and abdominal. So cervical part, then thoracic part and abdominal part. So in case of arterial supply, the cervical part is supplied by the inferior thyroid artery and this inferior thyroid artery arises from the thyrocervical trunk and this thyrocervical trunk is a branch of subclavian artery. So now regarding the thoracic part of esophagus, 
we all know that the abdominal aorta runs downwards along with the esophagus so there will be esophageal branches directly from the aorta which forms the major blood supply and at last in case of abdominal esophagus it is supplied by the esophageal branches arising from the left gastric artery so left gastric artery forms the short arises from the celiac trunk and it runs along the lesser curvature of the stomach and from that left gastric artery there will be short esophageal branches which supplies the lower part of esophagus so here in case of arterial supply the cervical part is supplied by inferior thyroid artery arising from the thyrocervical trunk where thyrocervical trunk arises from subclavian artery and uh, the um, and the thoracic part of esophagus is supplied by the esophageal branches directly from aorta and and abdominal part is supplied by esophageal branch of left gastric artery which arises directly from the celiac trunk so here the cervical part is drained by the brachiocephalic veins and this thoracic part is drained by esophagus vein and this abdominal part is drained by left gastric vein which drains completely into the portal vein so this one is portal vein and the major drainage is formed by left gastric vein in case of abdominal esophagus so you have to remember mainly these three veins the cervical part is drained by brachiocephalic vein then thoracic part is supplied by esophagus vein and the abdominal part is supplied by left gastric vein So here, this upper cervical part drains into deep cervical nodes, and this thoracic part drains into the posterior mediastinal nodes. Then this abdominal part drains into left gastric nodes. So in case of lymphatic drainage, one is deep cervical, then posterior mediastinal, and at last left gastric nodes. So now regarding the nerve supply, first regarding the sympathetic. So in case of sympathetic first we have to divide into upper half and lower half for upper half the fibers arises from middle cervical ganglion and in case of lower half the fiber arises from upper four thoracic ganglion and this sympathetic activity is vasomotor now regarding the parasympathetic activity one is upper half another one is lower half so upper half is by recurrent laryngeal nerve and this lower half is by the esophageal plexus found by vagus and the parasympathetic activity were sensory motor and secretomotor so this is all regarding the esophagus so now let us have a quick recap regarding the esophagus the so esophagus is nothing but an narrow muscular organ which extends from pharynx to the stomach and length of the esophagus is 25 cm and above it extends from the cricoid cartilage and it enters into the diaphragm at the level of T10 vertebra and it uh, pierces the diaphragm and ends in the cardiac end of the stomach at T11 vertebra level and while running downwards it uh, mainly runs through the superior and posterior mediastinum so you can see here in place of mediastinum it runs in the superior mediastinum and it passes through the posterior mediastinum in front of the vertebral column and now regarding the constriction of esophagus which is very very important so the first constriction is at the pharyngoesophageal junction and it is about 15 cm long from the incisor teeth and second constriction is at the level where arch of aorta crosses the esophagus and uh, the distance between the incisor teeth and the arch of aorta is 22.5 cm and at third where the left bronchus crosses the esophagus and the and the length is 27.5 cm from the incisor teeth and finally the fourth constriction lies where the esophagus pierces the diaphragm and the distance between the incisor teeth and the fourth constriction is 37.5 cm and these numbers are very important in case of mcq purpose and basically uh, the esophagus divides into three parts cervical part thoracic part and abdominal part so here the arterial supply is also based on that the first cervical part is uh, supplied by the inferior thyroid artery arising from the thyroid cervical trunk which arises from the subclavian artery and uh, this thoracic part is supplied by the esophageal branches of the aorta and the third abdominal part is supplied by the esophageal branches from the left gastric artery where left gastric artery arises from the celiac trunk 
and in case of venous drainage the cervical part is drained by the brachiocephalic vein and thoracic part is drained by the acygos vein and abdominal part is drained by the left gastric vein and in case of lymphatic drainage the cervical part is drained by the deep cervical nodes and and the thoracic part is drained by posterior mediastinal nodes and at last the abdominal part is drained by left gastric nodes and regarding the nerve supply here the esophagus is divided into upper half and lower half so in case of sympathetic activity the upper half is supplied by the middle cervical ganglion and lower half is by the upper four thoracic ganglion and the action is vasomotor and in case of parasympathetic the upper half is supplied by the recurrent laryngeal nerve and lower half by the esophageal plexus formed by the vagus and the action of paras and the parasympathetic activity is sensory motor and secretory motor in nature and thank you so much if you have any doubts regarding this topic just comment below and if you have any topics to be discussed that can also be commented below thank you so much and happy learning